good everyone welcome to the b-side what's the b-side you might ask well the b-side really comes from the era of vinyl records on one side you have the a side but you flip it over and then you got the b-side we're not going to be talking about records or music whether you're bobby blue bland fan or usher or jay-z or little pump little nuck nuck little pea knuckle whatever happens to be out but what we are going to be doing is talking further about this journey that we're on during this time i, I wanted to be kind of a, a laid back uh, scenario and i'll be sharing from week to week depending i may be sharing some other notes that were in the my sermon notes that just didn't make it out i just didn't add them into the sermon for that week for whatever reason they just might not fit within the flow of the message or it may be time related as well, uh, we can take some time to share some insights of what's been going on uh, as we've read through the scripture for the weekend. And uh, those who have been already sharing, I, I've gotten tons of encouragement from that. And I hope it's been encouraging to you as well as we journey together through God's word. As well, down the line, I hope to be able to bring in other people that we can kind of have a conversation together on things that we're learning or, or testimony of what God is doing. Today, I want to talk a little bit about some things that I'm seeing with Noah. You know, I don't know how well it came across on Sunday, but I find tons of encouragement from Noah. Being, being that he was the only cat at the time that was representing God. And I don't know, I can relate to that. I don't know if you can relate to that. There's been times in my life where I felt like I was the only one representing God and, and godliness in a given scenario. And it, it can be incredibly discouraging, right? I don't know if you've been in that scenario with a, a situation where maybe it's with family, maybe it's with friends where somebody just doesn't share that same passion you do. They don't share the same convictions. They, they're, not, they're not into it the, the way that you're into it. Noah serves as a great encourager. No matter how much time that I've felt like I've been alone, it hasn't been a hundred years. That's the length of which Noah was alone in his pursuit and being faithful with God without the encouragement of everyone else. One of the other things that jumped out to me um, Initially, I was tipped off by this, tipped off to this, not tipped up by this. I was tipped off to this by Dr. Tony Evans. And he, he may mention of verse 14 of chapter six, and he clued in on one word that I never took time to, to think about it until, until he mentioned something. So let me just read it real quick. It says, so make yourself an ark of Cyprus, or your, your transla translation may say gopher wood. Make rooms in it and coat it with pitch inside and out. So the word that I, I want you to take notice of is the word pitch. Now the same word is used for um, the, uh, the material that was put outside of the little basket that Moses was set into to protect it from the water, to seal it in, uh, in, 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 in the river where he was placed. What, what's the big deal about pitch? Well, pitch is like a petroleum type substance. It is used to waterproof wood, but it also preserves wood for a long time. Throughout scripture, you will find in various places, one of the themes that will come up is this idea of remembering what God has done. Remember what the Lord has done. Remember what the Lord has done. Remember what the Lord has done. One of the things that took place by putting 
pitch on the wood that the ark was made out of was that that wood would be preserved for a long time. In fact, as I was studying, it was interesting to see that even um, in World War II, there were pilots who had taken pictures of, of, of what they believed was the ark on Mount Ariat as they flew over that area. That this pitch on the wood preserved it in such a way of which people can then remember what God has done. What is more interesting about the word pitch in Hebrew, uh, which the original language that the Old Testament was written, the same word used for pitch or the tar-like substance, the petroleum substance put over wood to seal it, is the same word where that we use for atonement. What is atonement? Um, it's a maybe a fancy word that is used uh, throughout like the New Testament, in, in Old Testament, and then moving into the uh, New Testament, it is the payment for, the covering of sin. We see atoning sacrifices throughout the Old Testament. One, one of the ways that we see this play out is even in the Passover, where the, the, the people of Israel was told to uh, slaughter a lamb and put the blood around the doorpost as a, a sign to the spirit to pass over their households, to keep them safe, to, to preserve them, to keep them from harm. Ultimately, the greatest atoning sacrifice for our sin is found in Jesus Christ. One of the things I hope you begin to see as you study God's word, as we go on this journey together, is the great narrative that goes in the, in the Bible from cover to cover is God's plan of redemption. God's plan of bringing people who are rebellious, who are corrupt, who are sinful, who are far from him, drawing them to himself and changing their hearts. We see this from Adam and Eve and throughout the scripture ending in Revelation. This is a beautiful thing. As beautiful as this is, I hope that you also get a sense by reading the account of Noah and reading the account of the flood and how God responded to the corruption of humanity, how seriously God takes sin. God takes sin seriously, and because he is perfect, because he is just, because he is righteous, he has to deal with sin justly and completely. This is why he views sin in such a way. He doesn't hate his, 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 his people. He loves them so much that he's going to deal with the sin. This is where this whole idea of the atoning sacrifice, of God providing a way out, as God uh, puts together this idea of the ark as this, this covering, this, this way of protecting his people, he provided a way out. We see this provision with Noah, uh, or excuse me, Moses with the basket. We see ultimately the, the cross of Christ, the wooden cross of Christ as an ultimate picture of sacrifice and the atoning work of his blood for us. catch in chapter 9 the first thing that Noah did upon getting off the boat scripture says that he took time in verse 20 of excuse me chapter 8 verse 20 of chapter 8 Noah built an altar and sacrificed and one of the questions of your study along this part to help you kind of grasp, to meditate on, to understand in a greater way uh, the scriptures that we're reading is the question of was there any talk of an altar or altar building or something along those lines being, being said in, in your passage. Here in, in chapter 8, we, we, we find this. What is the significance of the altar? An altar is a place of sacrifice. An altar is a place of worship. Um, we are to come before God with a sacrifice of praise. Noah, amongst 
everything that's taken place. Think about it. Over a year in the ark, a hundred years to build the ark, people acting a fool all around him, not knowing how God was going to provide, having faith that God would, but not knowing all the details, seeing all these animals come in, you're spending a year with all these, these animals and your family cooped up in this, this big ark, this big boat, and now you're finally on dry ground. You're finally out of the zoo, so to speak. What would be your first thing that you would do? For Noah, he is, scripture says he was a man of the ground. He, he, was, he was an agricultural type cat. He, he was a farmer. And he might have been thinking, man, I need to quick put together my garden. I got to, you know, I need to plant the greens. I need to plant some cucumbers, some tomatoes. We need to have some fried green tomatoes. We need to have a cucumber salad and we need to boil up some greens and we're going to have a feast. Like that needs to be my first uh, order of action. All the other stuff can wait. That's not what scripture says. He said he built an altar and sacrificed. Let me ask you. Are you building altars and sacrificing? I'm not talking about going and like taking some material and, and building a, an altar like that. I'm not, I'm not talking that. I'm talking about engaging in the Lord, taking specific time to worship and that time being a sacrifice. Not some just throwaway stuff, but carving out specific time to sacrifice, to worship. This is one of the purposes of why we gather together on Sundays is we carve out a specific time to sacrifice, to give of ourselves, to come together collectively and honor the Lord. There are many other things that we could do with that time. We could we could just be hanging out, we can sleep, we could we could go to parties, we could put on parties, we could uh, barbecue, we could do a million other things, but what we choose to do instead is to build an altar and sacrifice to the Lord. I hope this week has been encouraging to you. I I hope this time serves as a way of God encouraging you from people who have went before it. As well, I encourage you to share what God is showing you in the scripture. There's so much there to be gleaned, to be chopped up, to, to understand, to digest. And I just encourage you to continue on with it. Sunday, we move from Noah and we begin our journey with Abraham. So I hope to see you on Sunday. I hope you continue to engage here on our Facebook page and in our Facebook group. Next week, we'll do another B-side as we begin to discuss and chop up about Abraham. And until we see each other again, God bless. Peace.